Aristotle thought every object had two uses. The first use was the original purpose for which the object was designed. And the second was to sell it or barter it. In barter system, an individual possessing any surplus of goods of value, such as a bag of rice or two cows, could exchange them for something perceived to have similar value, such as a bag of fruits or two donkeys. Over time, man understood from experience the limitation of the barter transactional system. Time, space, coincidence of wants, lack of stand standard measures and durability post obstacles in concluding barter transactions. To solve the problem, man invented money. He began to use both the cattle and the grain as money. In barter system, only the quantity was taken into account. In the monetary system, besides quantity, commodity value of the money was also considered. When there was a collective acceptance of value of money, it became easier to buy or sell an object. Organized trade began to emerge because of the introduction of money. Coincidence of similar wants and the problem of lack of standard measures were overcome to some extent. Acceptance of the money by the collective and trust in the form of money were the major achievements at this stage. But still, there were many other obstacles such as time, space, transportation, storage, longevity and durability of money. After using animals, cowrie shells, beads and salt as money for a period of time, man began to use metals such as gold and silver as money. Since they were more uniform in value, smaller in size, easier to transport and durable. The value of the new money was based on the value of the metal it contained and the trust that it would be accepted by others for exchange. At a later stage, there was a shift from trust in metal money to forms of money issued, backed and guaranteed by banks and governments. It was a shift from trust in commodities to trust in institutions and individuals. When the society shifted trust to human relationship, man's ability to carry out transactions multiplied enormously. Money has power only in the society, only in the place where there is human interaction. What value does it have in moon or in a desert? Acceptance and trust are the parents, the father and the mother of the money. If you give a counterfeit dollar bill and if the society trusts it and accepts it, then usable money is created out of the counterfeit bill, even though it is illegal. If you give a genuine dollar bill, and if the society refuses to trust it and does not accept it, then there is no money even though the bill is legally valid. Social and psychological values generate new money. When the commodity value was bound to physical objects such as gold, the amount of money generated was limited by the physical objects. When the society began to trust the man, his capacity, knowledge, skills and integrity, the money generation multiplied. Money is a symbol that represents values. Trust is a value. Credit card is an example for generation of new money based on a value. It is issued based on the trust in a man's capacity to yearn in future. Credit card has created new money worth billions of dollars. E-commerce industry will not be able to survive without credit cards. 
This industry grows at exponential rate because of the worldwide usage of credit cards. If the society can link social, human and other values with money, then enormous amount of money can be generated. In other words, values can generate enormous productive social power. Power is the capacity to accomplish work in any field. The capacity for accomplishment in every field of social life is social power. Conventional economic theories see the function of money as a means of exchange, unit of account, and store of value. There is an empirical truth in this great wisdom. But money is more than what the conventional theories think about it. Money has always been the most sought after specialized form of social power. It has all the characteristics of other social powers. In addition, it has characteristics social powers don't have. Money is a social organization. The power of money arises not from any intrinsic value of its own. The power arises from the complex social organizations that support its creation and utilization. Money is a mental organization of social forces. Mind saw the generation of a force in society in the moment of commodities in barter. This observation resulted in development of organized trade and the multiplication of transactions. Interconvertibility is an important characteristic of money. Money can be converted into innumerable other social powers. For example, one can convert money into education in law. The knowledge in law acquired can be converted into a source of money generation. One can generate more money than what was spent on acquiring that knowledge. Money is neutral and has no character, positive or negative, of its own. The power of money can be used to legally or illegally to influence public elections, government legislations, and policy decisions. Such practices are universally prevalent and in varying degrees. A right understanding of money can enable nations plagued by corruption to convert the destructive power of negative group into constructive energies for nation building. The center of life is man and not money. But man has become a willing tool, a willing weapon, a willing slave in the hands of a power which is his own creation. The individuals and the institutions accumulate money. The attitude of accumulating money results in the increasing concentration of wealth and power that constitute the basis for plutocracy. History shows that concentration of any power in the hands of a few individuals, a small group of people, has always resulted in serious imbalance in the society. It has led to avoidable human suffering, pain, poverty, and unrest. Many theories and conceptual frameworks have come and gone without solving the problem. Are the existing economic theories and social paradigms adequate to address plutocracy and to achieve wider distribution of money? Thank you.